So, I was gonna write this long intro about the state of music in 2012, and how you're the racist if you call me a racist for including artists of skin color other than my own, and how I don't see color, I just see shitty music, and how you're an idiot for defending artists that only see you as ATMs, and don't care about you beyond that. But I don't have time. Too much shit to get through this year, so let's just go. This is the 10 worst songs of 2012. Number 10, Bella Thorne, T-T-Y-L-X-O-X. Yep, the whole fucking song is pretty much like this. It's all text language, which, by the way, it was innovated at a time when phones didn't have full keyboards, and you had to press the same key like three times to get a goddamn letter. So it saved a lot of time. It's unnecessary now, but we're fucking stuck with it because people are lazy shits. Bella Thorne is a Disney product, so I can't blame her for how annoying this thing is, but this is what I assumed happened here. Two guys at Disney were sitting around a table, smoking cigars and drinking brandy. Hey, what are kids like? I don't know, my daughter's always fucking texting. Well, can we get the writers to make a song that uses a bunch of text shorthand? Kids are really stupid and easily amused, and would probably love it. Well, of course we can. We could do anything we want. We're rich white music executives. And then they laughed maniacally and had their secretary send in a little Filipino child to dance for their amusement while they tossed nickels at him. This is the result of that meeting. This is easily the most annoying song of the year, but... I can't rank it any higher than number 10, because it's meant for kids, and it didn't really chart on anything other than the Disney charts. Number 9. Justin Bieber featuring Big Sean, As Long As You Love Me. As long as you love me, we're under pressure. Seven billion people in the world trying to fit in. Let me start out by saying I didn't even want to include a JB song this year. I find him far too trendy to hate, and I usually hate people who make Justin Bieber jokes because they're fucking idiots. They're still referencing Baby, and wouldn't recognize a new Justin Bieber song if it raped their ear. These are the mouth breathers that claim my Worst Songs of 2011 video should have just been 10 Justin Bieber songs, despite the fact that it didn't even put out one fucking single that year. I really wanted to leave the kid alone, but... I just couldn't. Almost entirely because of the hook of this song. I hate to break it to you, Biebs, but the reason all these girls want you right now is because of who you are. There are a hundred other prissy little pretty boys at their school that look just like you, and the reason girls aren't screaming their faces off for them is because they're not on TV, they're not on the radio, and they're not making millions of dollars a minute. If you were starving, homeless, and broke, every single one of these girls wouldn't want your malnourished, unwashed hobo cock within ten feet of them. Big Sean shows up to rap about monogamy, not a very typical rap topic. We got issues, baby, true, 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 but I'd rather work on this with you than to go ahead and start with someone new as long as you love me. But ultimately, he's only here to give Justin credibility with the adult listeners as he tries to shake the whole baby, teeny bopper image and take his place in the business as the next Neo, Akon, or Justin Timberlake. If it's any consolation to Big Sean, he didn't deserve to appear on this year's list and wouldn't have if it wasn't for the fact that he drew the short straw and got assigned to throw a rhyme on this one. As long as you love me, I'll be a platinum, I'll be a silver, I'll be a gold. Sorry, JB, but girls don't want you to be their precious metal. They want you to give them precious metals. There are lots of poor but cute boys they can find at the club that can't buy them more than a drink, and the second you don't have any money, you're just another one of them. And any female fan that thinks they'd still like Justin Bieber if he was broke and no longer famous should visit a proctologist to see if they can have their head removed from their own ass. Number 8. Toby Keith, Red Solo Cup. Now, Red Solo Cup is the best receptacle for barbecues, tailgates, fairs, and festivals, and you, sir, do not have a pair of testicles if you prefer drinking from glass. This song came out in late 2011, but it didn't hit its peak on the charts until January and February 2012, which means it wasn't really relevant until 2012. So save your fucking comments about how it's from 2011, because I'm not reading them anyway. 
Now, I'm kind of breaking a rule here, because I wrote last year that I wouldn't include a song that I already did a musical autopsy of in the list of worst songs of 2012. Well, I'm breaking the rule for this one, because seriously, it's about a fucking plastic cup. It's not a metaphor. There's no deeper meaning behind it. The cup doesn't symbolize anything. It's Toby Keith professing his love to a goddamn piece of disposable colored plastic drinkware. I love you, Red Solo Cup. I lift you up. Proceed to party. There's nothing I can really say here that's not just repeating myself from the five minutes I already spent talking about this song, so if you really want to hear more about it, go check that out when you're done here. Or pause this, listen to that, and then come back and finish this video. Or don't, whatever. The reason it's not higher up on this list, though, is because Toby Keith admitted to knowing the song is stupid. It's not a parody, it's not a comedy song, it's a legitimate song. But he admitted that the song is just a dumb drinking song. He didn't write it, he just showed up and performed it, and it made him a dick load of money. All that is enough to save it from showing up any higher on the list, but not enough to save it from the list entirely. Because at the end of the day, it's still a song about a cup. Number 7. Future. Turn on the lights. Is that her in the VIP line with the V-Tan and the East Lorraine? We should drive the Nissan, now she in a Beamer. I don't wanna, cause she from the corner. And I heard that Beamer was a loner. Her old man the owner. And I don't even drink Coronas. Alright, what the fuck is this? Half of it sounds like some amateur trying to freestyle rap sing over some beat he found on the internet. And the rest sounds like he can't fucking sing. He's off beat. He's off key, I guess, if there's a key that this is in. I'd say that in this case they should have auto-tuned him, but it sounds like they did. It just didn't work. That's right, he somehow managed to fuck up the tune while using auto-tune. Now before you say, Buckley, I'd like to see you do better, but, you know, grammatically incorrect and misspelled because it's you, keep in mind I'm not paid money to make songs. Roger Ebert doesn't need to be a great film director to tell you why a movie sucks, just like you don't need to be a five-star chef to say that a meal is awful. Aside from the fact that he can't sing, it's incredibly repetitive. The phrase, I'm looking for her, is said over 20 times in the four-minute runtime of this song. I hope you find her soon so we don't have to fucking hear any more about it. Future appeared on the list last year as a featured artist on the song Racks, but I would say his performance there, as awful as it was, was still better than his performance here, which is basically like saying one piece of dog shit smells better than another. Either way, maybe he should stick to rapping about money and bitches instead of trying to get soulful or whatever it is he's trying to do here. Number 6. Juicy J featuring Lil Wayne and 2 Chains, Bands A Make Her Dance. Bands A Make Her Dance. And it's time for the yearly entry into the that's not what that word means category. First off, the fucking song title isn't even in English. Shouldn't it be bands make her dance? Why is there just this random fucking A in it? I'm assuming to force the terrible rhymes to come. In this case, bands are referring to the rubber bands used to wrap wads of cash and how they make the strippers dance at the club. So technically, bands make her dance. There's no A. But even more technically, the money is what's making her dance, not the bands. Try throwing rubber bands at a stripper and see how long you last at a strip club. The song also mentions racks again. Racks they racks, I'm throwing racks. This time at least admitting that racks is already slang for something else. They're showing their tits because he's apparently throwing thousand dollar bricks of money at them. Someone needs to tell Juicy J about the internet so he can save a few bucks. There's all sorts of free tits on there. Lil Wayne shows up to bust out the N-word as many times as possible. Uh, pop that pussy for real, nigga. Pull out my black car. That's my little nigga. Make a movie with your bitch, Steven Spill, nigga. Smoking on quiche. Cold, give me chills, nigga. And 2 Chains shows up to make a shitty song even shittier. 2 Chains. Yeah. 
waist bracelet. Let me see that ass clap. Standing old face strong. If your girl don't swallow kids, man, that whole face. Ooh. Got two bitches with me. Take a shot of one hoe. Use a her friend for a chase. While I'm at it, why is 2 chains being pushed so hard this year? I can only assume he's already had some money to begin with and he's just buying his way into these songs. I just figure he's the Rebecca Black of rap. If someone paid him even a dollar to be on this track, they paid two dollars too much. He can't rap, he's got no flow, he sounds like shit. Anyway, another shitty rap song about impressing women with how much money you have. In this case though, impressing women who take their clothes off because that's their job, it's what they're paid to do. It's like being proud you get the mailman to deliver your mail because you gave him 20 bucks, even though he was already going to do it anyway. Number 5, Madonna featuring Nicki Minaj and M.I.A. Gimme All Your Lovin'. This sounds like some sort of chant Madonna would start at the meetings of whatever religious cult she's joined this month as part of reinventing herself. You know it's getting bad when you have to try and trick your audience into singing along about how much they love you. She also doesn't know how to spell love, but I can understand. She's only had like 80 years on this planet to learn how. This is Madonna comeback song number 412, and much like her last effort in 2008 with 4 Minutes, she's hired some help because she's no longer relevant to a younger audience. In 2008, Justin Timberlake was huge, so he got the job. And this year, Nicki Minaj is a major star, so she gets featured, along with M.I.A., who hasn't been popular in North America since 2008, but I assume no one told Madonna that, and she's been frozen since about that time to try and preserve her for as long as possible. But in typical Madonna fashion of not really wanting to share the spotlight, especially with two women that are a threat to her on the charts, well, one anyway, unless M.I.A. is going to make paper planes too, she only gives each of them 15 seconds. 15 fucking seconds. Barely worth even making an appearance for. And of course, the girls waste it. Nikki manages to do her stupid Roman voice and mention Roman in her 15 seconds. You could be my boy, you could be my boy toy. In the nick of time, I can say a second rhyme, cause it's time for change like a nickel or a noise. Oh. I'm Roman, I'm a barbarian, I'm Conan. You were sleeping on me, you was dozing. Now move! And M.I.A. spends her 15 seconds pretending she's gangsta. Can someone please tell M.I.A. she's 37 and from England? I know she had a tough childhood, but it wasn't gangsta. She was poor in Sri Lanka and had to worry about possibly being gunned down by soldiers daily. Not by gangsters and thugs. Now the meanest street she walks down is Piccadilly. Either way, the only reason M.I.A. or Nikki are here is to try and sell the track. Madonna's other singles from this album didn't even make the Hot 100, proving that North America really doesn't care about this old bag anymore. Time to call it a career, Madonna, before you embarrass yourself and put out Like a Geriatric. Number 4. Fun featuring Janelle Monet. We Are Young. Give me a second, I... Yeah, yeah, another song from 2011, but no one would know that unless they either looked it up or are avid readers of Pitchfork. The general population had no idea what this song was until it became huge because of Glee and the Super Bowl. It was far more relevant in 2012 than in 2011, so that's why I'm qualifying it as a 2012 song. But what's it doing on a list of the worst songs of the year, you ask? Because it's indie hipster garbage that only got as big as it did because it played during the Super Bowl and was covered by the cast of Glee. Plus, I think the song's about a guy who beat his girlfriend. My lover, she is waiting for me Just across the bar My seat's been taken by some sunglasses Asking about a scar And I know I gave it to you months ago I know you're trying to forget so the guy with sunglasses is asking her about a scar she has, which he admits he gave to her. Yeah, this guy beat her. Great message for the kids. And by the way, before I really listened to the lyrics of this song and looked the band up, I thought fun, written in all lowercase with a fucking period at the end to add to the hipster nonsense going on here, had a female lead singer. Janis Joplin sounded more butch than this fucking guy. Also, the song changes tempo partway through. Anytime the beats per minute of a song changes partway through, I always feel like an artist is doing that to say, 
hey, look at us, we're so fucking cool, we could change the BPM. That there's no legitimate reason to do it other than because they're showing off. So, feminine sounding male lead singer, hipster bullshit, chart performance and sales that never would have happened without glee or being played during a major sporting event, pretentious BPM change that serves no purpose, lyrics about beating a girl, boring hooks. Did I mention hipster bullshit? Yeah, it deserves to be here. Number three, Flow Rida, Whistle. Can you blow my whistle, baby? Whistle, baby, let me know. Girl, I'm gonna show you how to do it, and we start real slow. You just put your lips together, and you come real close. Can you blow my whistle, baby? Whistle, baby. Here we go. Oh, how fucking novel. It's a song about blowjobs. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy a good beach as much as the next guy, but what makes this song so stupid is how clever everyone involved thinks they are. You know they were all sitting around in a studio thinking, you know what would be great? If we could make a song about getting head and get it to number one on Billboard and have it playing on radio stations all across the country. And then they did it because they know that North Americans have shit for brains and will buy anything. There's nothing subtle about it at all, but since the hook is, can you blow my whistle, baby, instead of can you suck my cock, baby? It's radio friendly, even though they mean the same thing. Good one, Flo Rida. Now soccer moms are singing along to songs about blowies with their eight-year-old kid in the back seat. Yep, real subtle, Flo Rida. Real subtle. As long as Flo Rida continues to make music, I have a feeling he'll be an annual candidate for my worst song lists. Normally I'd say, please just give up, Flo Rida, but I'd rather he didn't. It makes my job a little bit easier, knowing who is going to take up at least one spot on the list every year. Number two, Rihanna featuring Chris Brown, Birthday Cake. Come and put your name on it, put your name on it, come and put your name on it, your name that you want to put your name Before we start, I've been criticized in the past for how I pronounce Rihanna's name. Have a listen to this. Hi, this is Rihanna. That's Rihanna saying her own name. So to everyone that says Rihanna, I'm right, you're wrong. You know what else is wrong? The fact that this song exists. Holy shit, it's repetitive. You want that? Hmm, wonder what the next line's gonna be. Brutal. Also, like Whistle, it also includes incredibly obvious euphemisms for oral sex. The meaning behind that part is that guys only ever go down on a girl on their birthday, or at least that's what it means if the Sopranos taught me anything. But here's the worst part about this. Rihanna featuring Chris Brown. The man who beat her. I know Rihanna is young, dumb, and in love and has forgiven Chris Brown for being a woman-beating piece of shit, making her face look like Mark Hominix after he fought Jose Aldo. But this sends the wrong message. Do what you want, Rihanna, but you're a role model for young girls everywhere. By taking him back, it just makes other young girls who look up to you think, Oh, if she can forgive the abusive asshole she's with, so can I. Generally, people who commit violence against women are likely to do it again. And I have no sympathy for a woman who takes a man back after she got the shit beat out of her. If Chris Brown lays a hand on Rihanna again, they should just take him out back and shoot him, old yeller style. But there's no way anyone should feel sorry for Rihanna. The first time you get bit by a strange dog that you're trying to pet, It's not your fault. You didn't know it was vicious. But the second time, you fucking knew. And finally, the worst song of 2012 is a four-way tie between Nicki Minaj Starships Starships, 
Nicki Minaj, stupid how. Nicki Minaj, bees in the trap. I bees in the trap, bee, bees in the trap. I bees in the trap, bee, bees in the trap. And Nicki Minaj, pound the alarm. Instead of even reviewing these songs, I thought I'd just give you a medley of annoying and high-pitched sounds from each one. First off, I'm not convinced that bees in the trap is in English. In fact, the hook, I bees in the trap, isn't even correct slang. As you know, I speak fluent gangsta, and the trap is a place to make mad bank, yo. So technically, she be in the trap, not bees. If you're going to make up your own language, it should at least have some rules to follow. It also includes another terrible appearance by 2 chains. Okay, now Nikki, Nikki, Nikki. Put it in your kidney, got a new LS450, ain't no keys in this doohickey. And apparently a hundred motherfuckers can't tell her nothing. A hundred motherfuckers can't tell me nothing. But what about 638,000? Stupid hoe I've discussed more than I ever wanted to in a musical autopsy earlier in the year, so go listen to that when you're done here. But I'll again highlight the fact that it's a poorly written diss track that continues an incredibly pointless feud considering no one will know who either of these skanks are ten years from now. Starships includes more of the always annoying Roman voice. Bad bitches like me, it's hard to come by. Her randomly busting out Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. A song that is still better written than anything she's ever done. And more shitty rhymes. Sorry kids, feel free to defend it all you want, but on and zone do not rhyme. If you're claiming that own and zone rhyme, then own and on don't rhyme. So either way, it's forced and shitty. And as for pound the alarm, do I really even need to say more than this? What the fuck is that? Was a producer challenged with trying to find something more annoying than Nikki herself to put in one of her songs? Because if so, they fucking nailed it. Please, someone, do us all a favor and muzzle this thing before we're all subjected to a third Pink Friday album, this one called Pink Friday, Roman Can't Think of a New Title. And there it is, the 10, well, 13, worst songs of 2012. Honorable mentions go out to Tyga's Rack City. Last year we had racks on racks on racks. Apparently they kept stacking until they got a whole city of them. Drake and Lil Wayne's The Motto for introducing YOLO to the moronic masses. Mumford and Sons' I Will Wait. Congrats to Mumford and Sons, by the way, on figuring out how to make another song with alternating slow and fast banjos and acoustic guitars. And the Lumineers' Ho Hey, because besides being more slow hipster bullshit, it's a stupid title to have to say when you work in radio. Alright, Nikki, tell us about the hoopty hoopty hoop. <laughs> 